So a lot of this video is going to be aimed towards people who have bought the PCB only version. If you've got a kit, you don't really have to worry about a lot of stuff in this, but it's nice to know. And now through the magic of high tech graphics, I'm going to show you all the ingredients you need to bake a voltage controlled oscillator. Starting with the resistors here, they're all just quarter watt, 1% metal film. Seen them a bit better there. And there are a few more vital resistors for the tuning, and they are 10Ks, uh, 20Ks, and 100Ks. And what you can do if you're a fancy person is um, swap them out for 0.1% tolerance resistors. They're a bit more expensive, um, so a cheaper alternative is to just match resistors and use these uh, widely available, uh, pretty cheap 1% tolerance resistors. So let's look at the trimmers next. We got four of this type with a little screw on the top and one of this little type here. And they're all 10K, so you can't solder the wrong one in the wrong place. Nice. This little potentiometer is quite a cool one uh, because it's actually detented, which means that the center position has a little groove so you can feel when it's locked in there. And it's handy because if you turn it all the way to the left, that's an octave down. And if you turn it all the way to the right, that's an octave up. And you can just return to the middle position there and you know it's in tune. It's a linear one, B, 10K. A few different types of diodes. We've got your very standard uh, signal diode, 1N4148. Uh, we've got an 11 volt Zener diode. These two look a bit similar, so try to keep them apart so you don't get mixed up. It does say quite clearly on here what it is. Uh, and you've got your BAT42 shock key diodes. Moving on to the capacitors, we've got uh, ceramic ones here and we've got electrolytic ones here. It's just a note on the electrolytic ones. It does mean that they are polarised. So you can see on here, that's the negative side. And then the positive side has the longer leg on the bottom. So make sure to get that the right way around. It's quite well labelled on the PCB. Uh, also to note, uh, I spec a uh, COG um, ceramic here, just because it's more stable. Moving on to the ICs and the IC sockets. Of course, the core of the module is the AS3340 chip here. Um, I go for the AS3340A, uh, which is a slight improvement on the plain AS3340. Um, main advantage being that the pulse width modulation does not affect the tuning of the triangle and sawtooth waves uh, which is nice but you know it's up to you if you just want to use a plain one because you know why would you be using the pulse width modulation if you're listening to the sawtooth and triangle wave it doesn't have an effect on them so you know it's just me being a bit of a perfectionist. So we've got these nice Donkey Kong jacks and this rotary switch, which is definitely worth a note because it's a bit unusual and a little bit hard to find on the internet. So there's a few different versions of this switch. Uh, this one is a one pole, four throw version, which means there's four positions that it switches to. These four position ones are available from Syntaxis. There are a couple different options depending on where you prefer to source your components. There's one version on Mauser uh, that is a two pole, four throw version. That will work, but there's a major difference between this and that version, and that's to do with the bushing and shaft size. So the bushing is this metal um, threaded part and the plastic bit is the shaft and you can also notice that on this version it's knurled and on this version it's for a D shaft knob and you can see that there each one has its benefits um, this one fits the knobs that I like to use better um, this one you might have to even cut off to fit some knobs but this one 
the bushing is too short. So you know, it's, it's give and take with these. And I decided to go with this one because I made a shim PCB. Fits on there. Bumps that up to the right height there. Got the SPDT slide switch. Is a single pole double throw. So it doesn't have the middle position. It's just that way or that way. Here's your headers, uh, four pin for the female and male board connectors and you got your double row one for the power, ribbon cable, pretty easy to make yourself. You get these IDC headers they're called, IDC connectors, 10 way, 16 way, 16 I think, yeah, and you're not just with a smiley face. And don't forget the 11 millimeter female to female standoff and it's two M2 screws. Before I show you how to match the resistors, I thought it'd be a bit of fun to just have a little look at the circuit and understand why we're bothering to do this at all. So here are the resistors in the circuit. You can find the full schematic on the product page. So the resistors are all chained together in what's called a resistor ladder or a resistor network and it's basically a big voltage divider. Despite the math lesson, resistor ladders can actually be quite fun. I made a module with one on the front of it where you can take the resistors out and exchange them to do fun stuff. More about that in another video. Now I'm going to show you in the simplest terms what a voltage divider is. Looking at this top diagram here, we've got 0 volts coming in this side and we've got 2 volts coming in this side and we want to get 1 volt out the middle. Well, how do we do that? Well, what you can do is make a simple voltage divider with two resistors. You put one resistor here, let's say a 10K, and then because you want it one volt, the midpoint between naught and two volts, you want to match that on the other side so you have an even ratio and you'll get one volt out the middle. Now, if following that logic, if you've got three volts and naught volts, let's change this top one to three volts how do you get one volt still out of here when i've changed that to three volts well you can apply the same logic you can split it into three parts so you can put a 10k here you could put a 10k there you could put another 10k there and you're going to get out of here one volt two volts and you've got your three volts there now how can you do that with two resistors and simplify it? Well, just maintain the same ratio here, add these two together, change this to a 20K. Now, I've applied that on a bigger scale to the resistors that are in our circuit. So the values that we want to get out of this are 0 volts, 1 volt, 2 volts, 3 volts, 8 volts, and 10 volts. That's the ones that we're interested in for our controls on the panel. How do we do that? Well, what you could do, you could do the same as this and just put 10 10K resistors here and divide this 10 volts into units of one volt and then tap it off that way. But that's a bit wasteful because you're using a lot more resistors than you need to do because we only want these points here. So. We can do what we did here and simplify it. We could put a 10K here, a 10K here, a 10K there. Then we've got 50K. One, two, three, four, five. So you want 50K there and one, two, 20K there. And then you'll be able to get these points out. Now, the thing with resistors is they come in certain values. That's another video. Um, to do with preferred values, um, but you can't really get 50k resistors. So what do you do? They need to be in the right ratio with these others. What you do is get 200k resistors, 100k and 100k, and put them in parallel with each other. So what it does is makes twice the amount of path for the electricity to go through, which halves the resistance. So you're going to get 50k. Now can you see why we need 
these resistor values to be bang on in ratio with each other. Because if you imagine they're slightly out, say this is 55k, well that's going to throw the whole thing off, they're not totally in ratio with each other. All these points are going to move and you're going to get 3.3 volts here and something else, that's not going to be good. So you need to have them all in ratio with each other. Now the problem with resistors is they're not perfect. Even though it says 100k on these, they're not exactly 100k and that is where the tolerance rating comes in. So these ones are plus or minus 1% tolerance. So you know they're guaranteed to be within plus or minus 1% of the value that is stated. So what's 1% of 100k? It's 1k. So you can guarantee that these resistors are going to be within 99k or 101k. So you can see now why that presents a little bit of a problem for our resistor network here. So now I'm going to show you how to match the resistors. So we're going to be using a voltmeter. They're pretty cheap on eBay. I got this one for six quid. It came with the cables and a battery even. So you can't ask better than that, can you? It needs to be set to the ohms setting. Uh, that's for resistance and it needs to be in the right range here so if you're going to be measuring 10 k's which is what we're going to do first it needs to be here on 20 k because 2 k is too small and 200 k it'll work but it's not going to give you uh, as accurate a reading when we do the 100 k's i'm going to move it up to the 200 k range I've got these crocodile clips which make life a lot easier but you don't have to have those so we're going to start with the 10k resistors and then move on to the others once we've decided on this value um, what we're looking for really is a 0.1 percent tolerance um, so these are 10 kilo ohms that's 10 thousand ohms and if we want to find 0.1% of 10,000 ohms, what we do is divide it by a thousand. And that comes out as 10 ohms. So we want to find resistors with uh, a margin of 10 ohms difference to each other. Now, because we're measuring in kilo ohms here, the 9 is a thousand, the next digit across is the hundreds. And this is the tens. So we're looking for resistors with plus or minus one difference on this digit here. So this first resistor is measuring as 9.96. I'm going to take a note down here because I'm trying not to waste as many resistors as I can. Um, but I'll probably get confused and we'll have to do it a different way. Let's see. Uh, 9.96, 9.93... See, it's wavering around, but I'm not too picky about it. It's fine. 9.91. Mm. Yeah, group those together. And a 9.9. .9. Would I go for that? Let's measure this second one again. 9.9. .9. It's pretty much 9.92, .9 so that's good enough. So we'll go with this one. We'll go with 9.9. .9. Uh, 9.92. Now, since these are averaging about 9.91, uh, I'd say, that is the ratio that we're going to base the other resistors off of. So, for a 20k, you actually want it to be double 9.91. Now, what I've quite brilliantly done here is actually messed up and chosen the value of 9.91, which is really, really close to our boundary of 1% on these 10k resistors. So it's very much an outlier, um, which makes it much more difficult to find corresponding uh, ratios in the 20k and 100k ones. What you want to do, really, is look for uh, values that are as close to 10k as possible and uh, work off of that, because then it gives you 1% range either side 
to find the rest of the resistors and it's much more likely that you're going to find them quicker. So I'm going to go back and find some other 10k ones just to make my life easier. So I'm back with three new resistors and these ones are all 9.98k. Um, so now if we want to find the 20k what you do is times that by two and that gives you 19.96 so the actual value that we're looking for of the 20k resistor is 19.96 so let's start going through those and see if we can find one that is bang on there we go 19.956 that's great that's exactly what we need so now we're going to be looking for two 100k resistors of course they're not going to be actually 100k they're going to be in ratio with the 9.98 k's that we've selected here so how are we going to do that well we're going to want two of these resistors and put them in parallel so how do we work out what resistance these need to be well we've got this here and we know that the resistance of the parallel resistors needs to be five times this so five times 9.98 is 49.9. That's gonna be the equivalent parallel resistance of the two resistors here, the 100Ks in inverted commas. How do we find the value of these 100Ks? Well, you just double this. So times two, that is 99.8. And that's what we're looking for, two 99.8k resistors. And don't forget, you need to change the value on here to 200k. So the real value of the resistors that we just matched was actually below their stated value. And you might have noticed that there is an added layer of complexity when you're selecting resistors that are over their stated value. So for instance, if I measure this 20K resistor, it's actually 20.1K, okay? Um, but if you wanna measure it on this setting, on your um, ohm meter, the 20K setting, it's too high for it. It's not gonna work. So you're not gonna be able to get this extra digits of accuracy when you're on the 200k setting here. Now this uh, 20.1k should be double the 10.05k uh, resistors that we've selected here. See here, on the 20k setting on the meter, you're reading 10.045 is wavering around there. But you can't get that level of accuracy on the 20k because it's over 20k if you see what I mean. So how do you accurately measure this resistor? Well the trick is you go online and you put in parallel resistance calculator and you put uh, two resistors in parallel, you've got your 10.05 and you know that what you're looking for is 20.1 and you calculate the parallel resistance of those and that will come out as 6.7 ohms for those particular values you have to calculate your own when you're selecting yours so then what you do is put these two that you think are right together measure them in parallel together get the probe across both of those resistor legs on either side and we've got 6.7 on the meter so you know that this 20.1 k is exactly 20.1 zero 